If your gyno is super small, you notice it, you have nipple sensitivity, it's not massive. I do think Reloxfine could put a dent in it and or get it to a point where you don't care about it at all. What is up everyone, it's Bruce. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR spritz is some intelligent iron. And the ASMR sip, still looking for a new sponsor, but got some papaya green tea from Panera. All right, welcome back to a late night education. Today I'm going to be going over raloxifene, everyone's favorite anti gynocomastia man titty drug so we're all about not getting gyno here yet using tons of exogenous androgens that convert into estrogens that grow gyno that give dudes man tits that ruin dudes entire physiques you know they go into this downward spiral every time they post a picture and it's just this gyno forming and it's being pointed out by everyone i've been there there are ways to chemically go about it but before i jump into this raloxifene video because this is the drug that everyone's like yeah this gets rid of gyno i don't think in some cases that raloxifene will completely make the gyno go away you know gyno is one of those things where oh man you know like there could be like a little gyno that would disappear to where you can't notice it or maybe you eat something and you notice it again or maybe you go from you know a temperature change or something like gyno is one of those things that it comes back it goes away it comes back it goes away and if you have a big enough lump that's expanded you will definitely need surgery stop destroying your body with anti-estrogens trying to shrink this gyno when it probably did shrink a little bit not as much as you wanted and then you go around bashing whatever ugl you bought the raloxifene from saying it's bunk it's one of those things where take that with a grain of salt before i go into this because gynocomastia is one of those things in bodybuilding that everyone is terrified over i see guys using fuck tons of letrozole for no reason they don't even check their blood work they don't even know what their estrogen's at but the gyno risk is there. They're gonna use the biggest, most powerful tools, AKA letrozole, and ruin the rest of your cycle. That's all I'm gonna say before I go into this. So this history is according to the Anabolics 11th edition. Raloxfeme was developed by Eli Lilly and company and was FDA approved in 1997. So this one is much later in the game. And this one has been shown to be the evolution of tamoxifen as far as not targeting skeletal bones. Remember with tamoxifen, the only thing I included in the video, but you are making your bones weaker when you're on tamoxifen. Reloxfine, apparently, we're not going to go into the bodybuilder dosages, but in the dosages they tested, is shown to be way more skeletal protective as far as being an anti-estrogen in bone. So primarily in the medical field, this was an osteoporosis drug as well as, you know, breast cancer, right? This is why this was invented. This is what got all the funding originally to make Reloxfine a thing. Now let's throw it in bodybuilding. The Anabolics 11th edition actually has a great little study write-up from the Journal of Pediatrics, which shows the comparison of Novadex, Novadex to Raloxfine. The investigation involved 38 patients averaging from 15 years, suffering from gynecomastia for a little over two years, treatments for three to nine months with either agent had a high success rate for seeing some improvement. 91% for Raloxfine, 86% for Novadex. However, a significant reduction of gynecomastia was seen in more than twice as many patients with Raloxifene, which is at 86% compared to 41% with Novadex. Given its relative potency, Raloxfine hydrochloride may offer some alternative to surgery for some cases of gynecomastia. That is a bold last statement. Again, I already caveat this video. If you have horrible gyno, it depends how bad the gyno is developed. You know, that, that last statement saying this is a surgery alternative. It's not a surgery alternative because after you get real surgery, aka when they remove the entire gland, it doesn't come back. If you shrink it all the way down into, you know, the whatever size it was where you don't notice it, it's still there. It can still grow all the way back out. But can you avoid an $8,000 surgery and be like, yeah, this is good enough? For some cases of gynecomastia, raloxifene works. Other cases I've seen 
Again, the guy doesn't notice anything. He's flipping out. He's like, I thought Reloxfine worked, Ryan. I'm taking 120 all the time and nothing. It's like some people like Novadex better. This is one of those things where I do make this video because Reloxfine's so overhyped. And then as the DMs on Instagram flood in, people swear by Novadex for their gyno. People swear by Reloxfine. Personally, I've had great results shrinking my gyno earlier in my years with Reloxfine than I gave up on using it because I just got the surgery. I hate to see dudes constantly, constantly be abusing Nova, which is super liver toxic, abusing Reloxfine, which puts you at a higher blood clot risk, or abusing Letrozole to stop gyna from forming altogether, thus ruining their cycles, thus probably impacting their blood work in a bad manner, unless they're keeping everything in perfect range. The hyper scaredness with you know, gynecomastia is one of those things in bodybuilding where this is why I'm presenting this drug the way I am because I've seen guys go nuts about their gyno and the surgery is the answer. This drug might help you. All right, as far as the side effects via the anabolic 11th edition, we got the stereotypical serum anti-estrogen bullshit. Flashes, headache, weakness, cramping, edema, sweating, depression, weight gain, vomiting, ingestion, diarrhea, breast pain. So yeah, those are like the stereotypical side effects. The main side effect with Reloxfine is obviously, well, you're playing with an anti-estrogen type compound. You need to know what happens when you dip your estrogen down. If it goes too low, you feel like absolute dog shit. Your bones get weaker, blah, blah, blah. Everyone knows what happens when you crash your estrogen on this channel. But the main thing you want to think about with Reloxfine is the clotting risk and that you will most likely need to be on Reloxfine, in my opinion, for anywhere between 8 to 14, 15 weeks, depending on how big this guy I know is, how much you're attacking it. And at 120 meg a day, that's going to put you at a higher clot risk. And that's again... The TikTokers aren't talking about that shit. Overall, what is my experience with Reloxfine? Well, I've used Reloxfine a couple of times, like I said in the beginning of this video, and I thought it was effective for me. You know, it definitely shrunk my gyno down, made it less noticeable. I didn't really give a shit about it. And then I kept doing that yo-yo game with Reloxfine a couple of times. And then I started just, you know, I'm buying the surgery, whatever. I don't give a shit anymore, right? That's how it went with me personally. But I got good results from Reloxfine. I had other guys personally, local gym. I just trained with them on camera. He's used Reloxfine before to combat his gyno. He was actually showing his gyno on camera, my previous lifting vlog. And talking about Colin here. Colin has used Reloxfine, has not really gotten any results. I don't know if that's from the size of Colin's gyno or he's just not a candidate for this drug, but he does swear that Novadex does move the needle in the right direction. Point being, Reloxfine, according to the data, seems to be better with the gynecomastia on paper paper and they have proved it sort of. I wouldn't count Novadex out if you're trying to get rid of your gyno, but Reloxfine definitely is the exotic drug that everyone seeks out for their gyno. And I'm here to say that if you do 120 mg a day for upwards of you know, 14 weeks and it hasn't fully gone away, I don't think it's going to go fully away. I definitely think Reloxfine can push it back in the direction you want it to go. But remember that surgery is the only true way out of gynecomastia and the surgeries to a point where a gyna would never come back get a little bit more complicated as in they have to remove the entire gland and normally they have to reconstruct the bottom of your pec and nipple because those glands are much bigger than you think, especially if they're being blasted by exogenous estrogens because you're injecting exogenous androgens that convert to estrogens never checking your estrogen score, letting your gyno get out of control, and not learning how to correctly use CIRMs and aromatase inhibitors to control the estrogen conversion and steer the gyno growing away. That would require you to check blood work constantly and be on top of your AI protocols, but here at Russo's channel, you normally find me after you've already fucked up. I'm saying if you already fucked up, 
and you have a big ass gyno from gear, you might as well just save up and get the surgery than fucking around with these drugs for extended periods of time. If your gyno is super small, you notice it, you have nipple sensitivity, it's not massive. I do think Reloxfine could put a dent in it and or get it to a point where you you don't care about it at all. I will also say that Reloxfine has been proven, in my opinion, to not work on certain individuals, and Novadex seems to be better at 50 milligrams a day. Obviously, we know the liver toxicity of doing that dosage, but Novadex still plays a role in this study where they're comparing it, saying Reloxfine is better than Novadex. I'm saying try Nova, try Reloxfine, see what works for you. Realize the side effect profiles of these drugs and don't just, oh, well, if I get gyno, I'll take Reloxfine. No, you should be harm mitigating the gyno. You should be learning how to understand your blood markers. You should be getting blood work. You should be able to tell when your estrogen is too high and you're fucking up all your conversions. You should have an understanding of the hierarchy of the exogenous androgens you're injecting and what is converting to what and what side effects should poise ancillary drugs on the side in case something goes wrong versus you let it get out of control. Now you're carpet bombing your body with raloxifene trying to avoid the surgery. Or I'll say I got the surgery. That is the only way to fully get your gyno to go away. I'll see you guys in my next video.